Good morning. It's 
good to see everyone here today. We welcome you to Victory, where we're aspiring to be a church for the city by building families and impacting the community. Today is kickoff Sunday. <laughs> However, we really have very little to kick off, but there are a few things. But uh, uh, you remember back in the old days when we used to have a nice hamburger lunch? Who remembers that? <laughs> back in the day. Anyway, um, that's not happening. Let's just put it that way. If it's fun, it's not happening, to quote Pastor Roland. So if you like it, well, we're not doing it. <laughs> um, so, just a little sad news. Some of you uh, who've been here for a few years might remember Matilda Robinson, whom you might have known as Tilly. She passed away on September 1st. She attended Victory Lutheran Church for many years until failing health uh, prompted a move to Edmonton to be close to family. Tilly was a strong alto voice in the Victorians and in Jubilee Singers. Um, Holy Communion is, being, is continuing to be offered on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 11 a.m. or by appointment. Um, on uh, September 20th, that's next week, I think, uh, <laughs> a week from today. Are you listening? Is everybody listening carefully? All right. Uh, we are resuming our two worship times at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. So if you come at 10 a.m., you'll either catch the tail end of the first service or have to wait for the second one. So that's a week from today. Uh, we're already pushing the numbers that we're allowed to have. That's part of the reason for going uh, back to... To normal. Plus, things are beginning to open up a little bit more as time goes on. Next Sunday, uh, confirmation will begin at 2 p.m. And uh, if you know anyone who uh, is of age, which is actually all of you, because if you would like a refresher on your Lutheran faith, uh, you are actually invited to uh, come to the, uh, the class. So that is starts at 2 p.m. next Sunday. It's being led by Pastor Roland. Next Sunday, we are also beginning a third service at uh, uh, 7 p.m. This is going to be a more informal time following four rotating themes, praise, penitence, prayer, and healing. So everyone is welcome to that although the music may be a little more contemporary than some people are used to, just letting you know ahead of time. A reminder that the church office is closed on Fridays, so uh, we uh, just want to, to uh, put that out there again for you. So please stand as we prepare our hearts to receive Jesus today. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins... God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Bearing this great and merciful truth in mind, we take a moment to examine ourselves. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we are in bondage to sin and, and cannot free ourselves. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We now are seated to listen to Be Thou My Vision. Please rise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world and the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, it is by your mercy that we are redeemed. Help us always to remember that you have forgiven and accepted us only because of Christ, 
and not because of ourselves or anything that we have done. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our readings for today. Our first reading today is in Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 to 21. It starts, But now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him, they said. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, Please forgive your brothers for the great wrong they did to you, for their sin in treating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of the God of your father, beg you to forgive our sin. When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph replied, Don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he assured them by speaking kindly to them. Our psalm reading today is one, it, Psalm 103, verses 1 to 12, and we will read this responsively. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With, With my, my whole heart, heart I, I will praise his, his holy name. name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May, May I, I never forget, forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all, all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of, of the, the heavens, heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as, as the, the east, east is from, from the west. Our second reading is Romans chapter 14 verses 1 to 2 or 12 and it's called the dangers of criticism. Accept other believers who are weak in faith and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. For instance, one person believes it's all right to eat anything, but another believer with a sensitive conscience will eat only vegetables. Those who feel free to eat anything must not look down on those who don't. And those who don't eat certain foods must not condemn those who do, for God has accepted them. Who are you to condemn someone else's servants? Their own master will judge whether they stand or fall. And with the Lord's help, they will stand and receive his approval. In the same way, some think one day is more holy than another day while others think every day is alike. You should each be fully convinced that whichever day you choose is acceptable. Those who worship the Lord on a special day do it to honor him. 
Those who eat any kind of food do so to honor the Lord, since they give thanks to God before eating. And those who refuse to eat certain foods also want to please the Lord and give thanks to God. For we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. If we live, it's to honor the Lord. And if we die, it's to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Christ died and rose again for this very purpose to be Lord both of the living and of the dead. So why do you condemn another believer? Why do you look down on another believer? Remember, we will all stand in the judgment seat of God. For the scriptures say, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me and every tongue will declare allegiance to God. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Please stand out of respect for the words of Jesus. The Holy Gospel for today is Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with the servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned, to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, Please be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt would be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. This is the gospel of our risen Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we uh, hear, take my life and that I may be.
Our text for today from God's Holy Word is the New Testament lesson that was read earlier. Let me read just the first verse, and then I'm also adding the first half of uh, verse 13. Accept other believers who are weak in faith, and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. So, let's stop condemning each other. Will you pray with me? So, Lord, we're so grateful to you today that we can gather together and worship. We can hear your voice through, the, through a word and song. We can hear you as you speak to our hearts. We pray today for your Holy Spirit to move powerfully among us in Jesus' name. Amen. So rage is all the rage, isn't it? I think especially in the U.S., but you see it up here too. Rage is all the rage. In fact, there's even a name for it. Karen. Have you seen this? I, I've mentioned it, I think, before on TV or on the, on the Internet especially. They're called Karens. And I apologize to any Karens who might be here it's uh, nothing personal at all. So, uh, but a Karen is somebody who just throws an absolute temper tantrum when asked to put on a mask. And I mean absolute. They, uh, there's one where she's, this woman is throwing uh, groceries onto the floor. Uh, another one that I've seen where this woman was standing on a counter in a fast food place. Uh, the one I saw today was uh, at a cell phone store someplace in the U.S. where she was uh, carrying on. I would have loved to show you a video of that, but it seems that Karen is also foul-mouthed. And then I thought about uh, my previous church where many years ago, before my time there, there was a famous sermon called the F-bomb sermon where the uh, speaker had set up the mo a movie clip. This was before uh, YouTube and all that. And unfortunately set it up wrong. <laughs> now, it was forgotten by one of his later sermons in which he literal literally dropped his drawers. Most people don't remember the point of that sermon. <laughs> I'm sure there was, well, there was one, but uh, I don't know what, uh, what it was. Well, I believe that when we see all this anger, and it's not just about the mask and all that, there's anger in the world today. Maybe we need to listen to Glenn Campbell. <laughs> I think it's time to try a little kindness. Do you remember that old, old song? Try a little kindness? There's a more modern country song by Tim McGraw called uh, Always Be Humble and Kind. If you listen to country music, you've heard that one. Those are good advice because kindness reflects the gospel heart of God reflects who the Father really is. In fact, it's reflected in the gospel lesson for today, isn't it? Where the king showed kindness to the man. Now, that's a modern translation, but it actually more accurately translates it for us because he literally owed millions and millions of dollars. It was a huge, like a national debt kind of thing. Huge, huge, huge debt. Yet he was forgiven, us, forgiven from it. God is calling us as believers to try a little kindness. But like I said, rage is all the rage, and I would like to know why are Christians buying into it? I have a lot of, uh, of uh, Christian friends who are just leading the way when it comes to anger. Remember Y2K? Who's old enough to remember Y2K? The year 2000. Remember that? Remember what was happening in the year 2000? 
the world was supposed to come to an end. Do you recall that? Because all the computers in the entire world were going to shut down and we'd be plunged into darkness and into chaos. Do you remember that chaos and that, all uh, the darkness that happened in, on uh, January 1st, 2000? you remember that? Well, no, because it didn't happen. And I remember trying to tell people, well, you know, we're like at the end of the hours, <laughs> you know? The day starts to the west of us in the middle of the Pacific, and by the time it gets all the way to North America, chances are we'll know what's going to happen. I knew a guy, a Christian, a pastor, who was so convinced this was going to happen that he cashed out his, uh, his uh, retirement plan, converted it into gold. He even put in a, uh, a well. He had, he had city water, but he put in a well and he looked more than a little foolish on January 2nd, 2000. Why do we as Christians do this? Of all people, we shouldn't. It, it's fear. And perfect love casts out fear. It's great to believe our theology that things are going to get worse and worse because that's what the Bible says. But we also need discernment. We need to take a chill pill. That's what Paul says. He says, accept other believers who are weak in faith and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. Don't argue with them. In fact, he goes on in this uh, chapter to discuss a number of things like diet, it was a big controversy whether, uh, whether Christians should keep uh, kosher or not. And because they decided that we didn't have to, you can now eat bacon and ham and shrimp. Seriously, that's true. Or days, whether you had to worship on Saturday, which is the, the Sabbath, or if there was freedom to worship on other days. Or wearing masks. Oh, no, it doesn't say that, does it? <laughs> or the one that really gets to me is all these Christians who are all fired up about a certain foreign country's election. I don't get it. It's fear. Perfect love casts out fear. God calls us to live in grace. Because we've experienced the grace of God, right? We've experienced the love of Jesus. And we can, as the old saying goes, not sweat the small stuff. And guess what? It's all small stuff, right? Try kindness. In, in uh, Philippians, Paul says, chapter 4, verse 5, let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. In fact, kindness is even a fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? A working of the Holy Spirit. Rage may be all the rage, but kindness wins out. How can I say that? Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said the meek will be crushed under my heel and destroyed, right? Did he say that? What did he say? He said, the meek will inherit the earth. And I think in that sense, it's talking in terms of kindness, not being like a doormat or anything like that, or being complacent, but being kind. It's the power of forgiveness. That's what the other two lessons were about today. The story of Joseph in the Old Testament reading. Now imagine this. If you were Joseph, your very own brothers decide they're going to kill you. Would you have a little trouble getting over that? If your brothers decided to kill you? And they, instead, they threw them in a pit. 
and then sold him into slavery. And when he got into slavery, he ended up being thrown in prison for trying to do the right thing. And then when his family shows up, Joseph now is the prime minister of Egypt, has absolute power. He could have these guys killed, his brothers killed, if he really wanted to. But he didn't. He tried a little kindness. He tried forgiveness. That's what uh, it says in Genesis chapter uh, 50. Joseph replies, Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. It's forgiveness and kindness. And Jesus tells the story of the debtor where a huge debt is forgiven out of the kindness of, 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 the, of the master. You see, kindness flows from forgiveness and grace. Kindness flows from the cross. Kindness, not anger. It says in verse 9, if I can find verse 9, there it is. Christ died and rose again for this very purpose, to be Lord both of the living and the dead. That's the key verse, the, the foundation stone for which we build our lives, that Jesus is Lord. For we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. If we live, it's to honor the Lord. And if we die, it's to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. That's what he calls us to do. That's why we try a little kindness. Now, of course, I'm perfect at this, right? My wife will tell you. The other day I had a moment. Do you ever have a moment Anybody ever have a moment? <laughs> Lots of things just started going all, you know, all at once. There was an, uh, several situations, not, not work-related, actually, but in our, in our personal life. And then the microwave died. <laughs> it's probably good it died. I think it was ready to catch on fire, actually. And it was, she was just using it as a timer. There was nothing in it. Well... I was probably less than kind. But that's where we come back to Glen Campbell again, right? Try a little kindness. So why do you condemn another believer? Why do you look down on another believer? Remember, we all stand before the judgment seat of God. For the scriptures say, as surely as I live, live, says the Lord, every knee will bow to me and every tongue will confess and give praise to God. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. So let's stop condemning each other. Remember, we too will be judged. And in fact, are judged by others, right? Right? Why don't we try a little kindness? Try a little forgiveness and grace. Try to live not in anger, but in, in joy. In the love of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's listen to a, a song called Alleluia, Give Thanks.
Please rise as we now confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, saying, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. I invite forward um, whoever's doing the muse. Oh, is, is Heather? Heather, yes. Oh, okay. Carl Sorry, I didn't write it down. Carl My had a fall. That was... Uh, a last second change. Oh, okay. Oh, my apologies. I didn't write that down. Anyway, uh, before we go into our musical offering, I just want to remind everyone that our offering box is at the back of the sanctuary. If you didn't get a chance to get it in on the way in, you can get it on the way out. We also have online um, donation options and giving options, which you can find on our website. And then you click the little tab called Donate, and it gives you all the different information regarding that. So we thank you for your continued faithfulness in giving that we can continue the work of Jesus Christ here at Victory Lutheran Church, especially in a time where the gospel is needed so much more uh, as people are needing hope in this season. Thank you.
Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Lord, forgive us for the times where anger consumes us. Forgive us for the times when we express ourselves in anger towards our loved ones, towards our neighbor, and towards you, O Lord. Let us not give in to the spirit of the age, but instead seek the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, which drives out anger and invites in perfect love, the love of the Father, the love of the Son, the love of the Holy Spirit existing from all eternity and forever. May such love indwell in us through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the many people in the hospital at this time and in the hospice. We ask for your healing hand upon those in the hospital and your mercy and peace upon those in the hospice. Be with each of the individuals and the families as they go through these difficult times and comfort them by the word of your gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the lonely, the sad, and the depressed, for those considering harming themselves in accordance with the call to prayer that began this last week. And we thank you, Lord, that Medicine Hat is waking up to this, rising up to meet the challenge in prayer. Lord, protect people from the dark thoughts that consume them and give comfort to the families of those who have lost the ones that they love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the catching of those who wish to exploit children for profit. Lord, we ask that they would be caught by the law and come to a repentance, that those evil endeavors would be brought to an end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we continue to pray for our schools in this season. We ask that you be with the teachers, the administrators, and most especially the children. Keep them safe from all harm, keep them safe from this virus that they may learn, that they may grow, and that they may prosper in this season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for your church. Guide us in this season, ever faithful God. Show us the path we are to go, the ways in which we are to walk. Show us how to love you and love our neighbor in this season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray now together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to This is My Father's World.
Well, recorded music is never quite the same as live music, but what a blessing that we live in a time that we can have such excellent, beautiful quality music with people that just are gifted by God with the wonderful things that they're, they're sharing their singing and music. And Pastor power. Roland, I'm also glad that I'm not the only one that when I'm canoeing in the woods, suddenly a orchestra appears on the yeah. bank. So I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one that happens to. So. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And just a reminder, two services starting next week, Thank 9 you. and 10.30. <laughs> I mean, it was beautiful, but it's also kind of hokey. If you it, think it, about it is. It. it is pretty. But it was beautiful. The funny thing is, a lot of those, a lot of those videos are usually pretty cheesy. You know, yeah. they have a lot of those kind of tacky elements, right? <laughs> but oh man, I was thinking the same thing, but I I'm like. You.